Hello and welcome back to Sean and Belize. I am deep in the southern district of Toledo in a village called Forest Home. A friend of mine was supposed to bring me here and didn't. So I'm out here with another friend from another village and we we had to find the Confederate Cemetery. So The local cemetery is maintained up front. And these Confederate graves I'm gonna show you. You better appreciate this. It's through this jungle. So if I make it all the way back there, you better like, subscribe, share, comment. Make this go viral. Okay, I made it. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> Elmer cleared a path for me. So, back here is the Confederate graveyard. <laughs> All right, so we made it through this jungle in Forest Home Village Cemetery to make it back all the way to this Confederate gravesite. I don't want to step on someone's grave. Let me go this way. Yeah. <laughs> so, just give you an idea of some of the graves here. I think these were the first ones who passed away. We'll get a look, better look at them in a second. So why is there a Confederate graveyard in Belize so as the Civil War in the US was coming to an end and southerners were gonna feel a little displaced a couple companies in Belize had bought up lots of property and were offered tax incentives and uh, cheaper costs through the government in order to promote agriculture and farming in Belize, it would help the economy. So they went to Southern farmers and recruited them. Hey, come to Belize. Things aren't gonna be so good for you in the US. You might be charged with treason. Who knows? Nobody cares what you do down here. So many families did, they bought up in different areas. And Toledo district, there's four villages in this area that encompass a, a pretty decent amount of land um, bought up that area moved their families down and went to the government it was like well who's gonna work the land you know uh, the US had done their job in abolishing slavery and England had already abolished slavery England's like now nah, we got to work around for that so they brought in indentured servants from India well the southern farmers from the u.s did not exactly thrive here the climate is no good for cotton plus the amount of bugs that end up uh, eating right through the cotton fields that didn't work out so they kind of um, focused primarily on sugarcane but the people themselves did not exactly thrive there was an early uh, wave of cholera that hit quite a few families and basically by the 1930s the confederates in this area had just picked up and left so after that the indentured people who were working the land just stayed on the land kept working were able to buy up some pieces but they went to the government in the 1960s and said look we've been here almost 100 years working the land taking care of it Government should buy it and give us the land or sell it to us real cheap. We're here. And that's exactly what happened. So now these villages are primarily of East Indian descent. And you get some of that Indian culture. And that's how one culture got here. Uh, that makes Belize such a big melting pot. So let's take a look at some of these graves. Okay, so I want to jump in here. Um, as I'm editing this, I realized... I left out a few things I wanted to say. That's what happens when you're working off a script and, uh, or no script rather. 
and I was a little flustered because uh, walking through that thigh high grass uh, in that area I felt like I was actually risking my life to do this a friend of mine's uh, wife was bitten by a fair de lance or Tommy golf uh, not too far from this and uh, did not want to get bit by a extremely venomous snake but one thing to remember back in those times Belize was British Honduras it was a British colony and the British had very close ties with um, the Confederates at the time England was kind of funding the war against the Union providing Confederates with uh, weapons really trying to push their uh, agenda against the Union so they made very close ties with um, military personnel uh, political leaders and financial leaders so that's why it was so easy for them to contact them and try and lure them into agriculture here in Belize so trying to read some of the names on here has gotten pretty difficult Maria Louise and I can't see the last name Mason well, I think Mason was one of the surnames of Confederate families that were out here. Wasn't all bad. They did bring um, the first Methodist church, a couple primary schools. There was some intermingling. Uh, with the cultures and different races here. But there's more grays back in there. But you can see how thick this is. I was really hoping to get a better view. A little deeper, I was already back there. There's a total of 18 marked graves here. And one extra one. This big rock was an American who moved to Belize and worked in radio here um, in the late 80s, early 90s. In 2012, I think he passed away and his final wish was to be buried at the Confederate Cemetery. So he's back here with the old ones. All right, well, I hope you appreciate the little piece of history on why there's a Confederate grave yard in Belize. This is in the South. There's actually other places where Confederates did come down and farm um, somewhere around Orange Walk, a uh, few places down here, but this is the one graveyard that's on the National Institute of Culture and History for Belize and can be found in Forest Home. Um, hope you appreciate it. This was a uh, very jungly walk to find it. And now me and Elmer have to get through uh, all these wee wee, <laughs> wee, -wee ants. He's calling them. Uh, nothing wee wee's making the holes I'm seeing. So <laughs> we're going to try and get out of here and head to our next location. Yeah, Enjoy. These, these boys here. I'm going back. I'm going to get the off. <laughs> what is that hole? That's, I, I, I think that's, that's wee wee ants. Wee wee, some small ants. Small ants. Small ants is a yeah. big ass hole. Yeah, it's not, it's the wee wee, small one. 